My name's Ken, Janus Materials. I do demolition and repurposing. them cows and keep them grass fed from the farm to the kitchen with your daily bread the chicken and the sheep stay safe from coyotes bro my dog champ chase him down like a rodeo everybody has a job on the farm and the animals come when i call because they know me so no chemicals and herbicide feeds we rotate the herds and the goats eat the weeds the worms make dirt and there's fruit on the trees the land grows everything we need Conversations that matter. At Your Faith Farms, we interview business owners, entrepreneurs, athletes, and everyday people on horseback. We ask them questions about fear, their business, their life, all while being on the back of Your Faith Farms horses. Enjoy this Heroes on Horseback Conversations That Matter. Okay, Ken, who's your customer base? My customer base is farms, shooting ranges, um, marine customers, for example, uh, docks, uh, people who want to create reefs, and anybody who lives close to the water, um, as well as uh, even residential. There's actually a market for the, my material to build houses, hurricane proof houses. Wow. This is Athena. She is a Tennessee walker. Uh, she's right at nine years old, and she's one of our rescue horses that we have saved. And all of our horses are rescue horses. They have been in some situation to where we save them. So this is who you're going to ride today. All right. And um, when you work in the horse, you always work um, facing the horse on the right side. So we're going to go around the horse. But what I want to show you is, you hear people say, horses kick. Don't walk behind a the horse. They are prey animals. I mean, their eyes are on the side. Predators' eyes are on the front, so oftentimes when you're behind them, they can't see. So a technique that you always want to use when you're going behind a horse, you tell the horse to get her attention, I'm going behind you, right? And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to touch her other thigh, and I'm coming behind in close proximity to where if she had to, she couldn't kick me anyway. So just to get used to the horse, go ahead and try that. Then I'm coming behind you. Mm -hmm. Put your hand on the other side and stay close. Around. You have passed the first test right. of working with the horse. All right, so now we're going to get your horse all saddled up. And we work this way when working the horse. So if she does kick, the front legs have to kick that way. The back legs kick that way. So we work this way. She knows I'm with her. I'm always kind of touching her and talking to her. And I'm going under. I'm just reaching and I'm grabbing. Okay? So now I'm going to take this. And this is just a little bit. So First hole right there. Pull it all the way through. Awesome. Okay. And now you're going to come up over here. All the way through? Uh huh. Put it back down. And, and this time go behind that bottom one. Right, right under there. This one? Right here? Right under there. Okay. So where the. Teeth can grab it. Yeah. All right. 
So this is a cinch. And what happens now is when it's ready to tighten, you just pull straight up. Mm -hmm. And that the roller will pull it. And it's cinched. So you see how she moved a little bit. Mm -hmm. So hold it right there. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to make her take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. So I'm touching her again. I'm going to say, hey, Athena, give me a little. She's going to give me her leg. That'll make her take a deep breath so we can tighten it. Now I'm going to let her foot down. I'm going to put it all the way up. Okay. Okay. Now? Mm -hmm. One more time. There you go. All right. So I'm going to hold it right there for you. And now we use something called 741. Okay? If that lottery number hits, hey, <laughs> we're going to be all right. Let me give you some. Yeah. So we get in there like that. There's our number seven. Okay. Okay. This is our number four. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you make the four. I'm coming behind here. Little tight, which is good. Okay, and here's our number one. Let's come straight straight down. down. Yep, so I'm gonna let you pull that straight down. Okay, now, so you pull out here. Gotta bring that one up. All right, that saddle is, unless we are 400 pounds, we are right. And so we just took the saddle. And here we go. So keep my pace like right here, but you gotta keep her go him going and oboe do just like that, all right? Because you've been on that side of the hill. Slow it down, Sai, because you, your horse is in control. How you feeling, Ken? You okay? Okay. It's been a long time. I feel great, man. It's like an old, like riding a bike. <laughs> so bring your hands up a little higher, kind of rest right there. So that way, when you need to. Control them, you don't have to, as far to pull. Okay, and so what size horse is just kind of keeping your horse motivated to go. Okay, keep them going. Okay, Ken, uh, tell us some of your fears that you've had to overcome in business. Failure. That's it. And why you say failure? Because failure encompasses a lot of things. If you get into business, you, your name's on it. So when you fail, it's your name. So it, 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 it's personal. So that, I would say that would be the biggest fear is failure. You can lose the money, but you can make it back. But you don't want to fail. The students I've been able to teach, the lives I've been able to change through group economics. When you say your greatest accomplishments, how did you feel as a business owner with those accomplishments? I got a letter one day. It was about three years after I'd speaking at Morgan, Morgan University, uh, the College of Engineering. And the letter said something like this. You did a seminar, I was a sophomore, and I was about to quit engineering. And thanks to your talk, and I had talked about being the struggles of being a C student and dragging yourself up and over the glass, he goes, I didn't quit. And he goes, I didn't want to write this letter to you until I made it. I now am working for the city of Baltimore as an, as an engineer, and it wouldn't have happened unless it was for your seminar. That was one of my greatest achievements. Ken, tell me what the future holds for you. The future of our business is getting our, our, our trademark um, RID, Resilient Infrastructure Demolition, patented so that our process can be can be uh, marketed all over the country and all over the world. I've been able to build structures with zero carbon footprint, zero carbon output. And what does that mean in layman's terms? Well, what that means is, come on, Tina. What that means in layman's terms is is uh, you're able to build something with, pro with material that's already been built so that you're not spending any any more energy to build it. So any of the energy you were to create a new house, new side paneling, new new chimney, new new flooring, new slab, it's already been made. It's already been made years ago. Kind of like a time machine. Taking that material up and using it for, using it in the future. But in order to know that future, you're gonna know those relationships. You're gonna know what people need and what they want. 
And that's really part of the secret sauce. So Ken, if you could begin to find partnerships and relationships, what are you looking for in partners? My, my, my partners are, are in uh, um, coastal conservation uh, communities, um, subdivisions. Um, but there's a really, really good partnerships I've had in the past is uh, is uh, shooting clubs and shooting ranges, particularly as it relates to uh, training, uh, how to handle firearms and how to use them uh, effectively. So there is a gap in the firearm security market. Absolutely. The problem with a lot of these ranges is to build new ones. The environmental standards you have to use uh, can be very cumbersome. So we've come up with a way to solve a lot of that problem. And a lot of firing, firing ranges, shooting ranges have really been attracted to it. And so I see we have uh, Stefan with New Image. Tell me what you and New Image are beginning to uh, pull together with the respective businesses. Well, right now, I'm uh, New Image is, uh, we've talked about uh, a number of different um, ranges they wanna build on, on property for training and I've uh, already been able to source a lot of their materials and come up with some uh, procedures and processes that these, uh, these ranges can be built at well less, well less than half the price and, and three or four times the speed. And on our end, we just feel that there's a need, and I know that others are doing it, but there's a constant need to have a black owned range with a black company not discount anybody else, but there's just a certain way that we have to be taught sometimes, and we feel like we need to be able to prepare, we need to get a better understanding of, of gun control, you know, range, win, and and working with uh, Ken. Ken is not only a, a contractor, but he's an expert in the, the field of uh, guns and the whole nine, so we're not only getting the range built, but we're getting the expertise from somebody that has the past performance and experience on how to teach and train uh, people on how to properly use their weapons, how to properly carry them. You see a lot of times in the movie, the guy, the black guy shooting with the gun turn like this here. That only happens in Hollywood. You don't shoot like that in real life and plan to be accurate. So we're looking forward to the uh, partnership and growth. That We're not even only looking to do it here. We're looking to do it in other places. So anybody out there listening, if you're interested in having your own gun range, open the range or close, then um, get with myself or get with Ken. And let's look and see what he can do with some of the, his technique and what he can do to save you a lot of money to build it. So definitely reach out to us. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Ken with Janice. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Stephan with Norman Protection Agency. There's the black walnut. All right, Ken, so this is a spot on the property where our three streams kind of come together, and it's a crossroad uh, at the farm. And so, you know, we know at some point in your career there were crossroads that you came to where you had to make some critical decisions. Uh, tell me about a time or two or three where you've had to face some crossroads. One of the biggest crossroads is when people tell you what they can do, it's a question mark. When people show you what they can do, it's a period. When they show you what they do and there's a period of that, no one wanted to let them go. That's, that, was, that was one crossroads. The other crossroads is, you know, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. Hmm. And whenever opportunity is put together that it was just too good to be true, you got, you're, you're gonna get slaughtered. Hmm. All right, Ken, last one. What are three things about you that you wish people knew? Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> I wish they uh, knew that no matter what anybody says, I'm a nice guy and I have the best intentions. I wish that uh, they knew not to take advantage of that niceness, 
and I wish they knew. I love lemon meringue pie, and I can't find any. I wish they knew that. <laughs> All right, I'm sure our, our viewing audience is gonna find you, and you're gonna get some lemon meringue pie. I love lemon meringue pie, and I haven't had a good slice in years, so come awesome. see me. Awesome, thank you for uh, participating with Heroes on Horseback, Conversations That Matter.